Good morning and welcome. We are doing UHB 3. And in UHB 3, we are almost coming towards the end. We're on lecture 26. And we have been discussing this, our desire for continuous happiness and how we can achieve it through right understanding and right feeling. And this whole clarity of this whole process, that is resolution. So in resolution, what you have is right understanding, wisdom. Right understanding is seeing the reality as it is being able to see the existence as it is. That is right understanding. With that, being able to identify the human goal, which we refer to as wisdom, and then to how, how to go about fulfilling that human goal, which is behavior, work, and participation in the larger order. And the outcome of this is the undivided human society, universal human order, and human tradition. So we were looking at this one by one, we looked at behavior, work, and participation. We saw the details of how it would look when we are going up from the lower activities to the higher activities, and how once we would reach the highest activity of realization and are able to see the whole picture, are able to see the coexistence, then how we would come down and have it in our expression. So we talked in some detail about this, the behavior work and participation in the larger order. And then we were to look at the outcome. The outcome in the form of an undivided human society universal human order and human tradition. So the assignment was to reflect on your effort towards working for transformation within yourself, your effort in your participation in the family, working towards justice in relationships, and your participation in some of the dimensions of human order, that is societal systems. Now, in societal systems, in the order, that has to do more than what we are doing within our immediate family, because we are talking about outside the family now, in the societal system. So reflect on what you have achieved on these fronts, and what more you can do, or what further effort you need to make regarding this. So, if anybody would like to share their observations, Namaste. Madam, uh, Madam actually, yesterday I uh, shared my reflection. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, in addition to that, yesterday I shared uh, uh, the education part and the health part and production part. And regarding justice also, uh, regarding exchange, uh, just a few lines I would like to uh, share the exchange stories. So whatever things we have in our family, just uh, very few days before uh, I shared this also, the things what we have, what we bought also, uh, generally I uh, use it, uh, madam, uh, until uh, it can be used. And my wife sometimes uh, scolds also, but I made her realized uh, how many days we uh, are over after we buying it, uh, you don't see that. Uh, whether it is in good condition or not, you have to check like that. And I uh, made a habit to my children also. And I am amazed, even the bags also, madam, I, even I am amazed. My children, uh, suppose if it uh, got repaired, Previously, I used to go to a cobbler, but uh, nowadays I'm using to, uh, I, I used to go to uh, a person who repairs uh, the seat works and all. Due to that, uh, the stories of the bags, 
school bags I, even i am amazed at that uh, uh, young age class 5 6 7 8, 3 4 years they used madam with good condition also i myself amazed so i felt happy not because i saved money but because uh, the uh, 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 the the usage uh, ability so uh, waste is uh, minimization so my children are doing the, i felt very happy madam regarding that so in that uh, storage point of view uh, and uh, i think uh, uh, i i uh, so I, I at least uh, not only i'm practicing myself but also i'm uh, realizing the other people without any discomfort and dissatisfaction they are doing madam now also they are doing in things usage of things also and uh, thank you madam very nice uh, just one thing i would like to clarify this would come under right utilization uh, right utilization uh, and uh, exchange storage is uh, uh, could we you please a little bit in terms of the dimensions in society so this is within the family this yeah is it, exchange storage also can't we do in uh, uh, family <laughs> you can right <laughs> now we are talking about what we are able to do in the participation in the larger order larger order, yeah yeah so uh, that's why we are discussing uh, uh yeah madam could you please just uh, uh focus light on uh, exchange stories uh, just i forgot yeah exchange is referring to see when we um Say we take some physical facility. Now we are not producing our own. Okay. Are we producing our own physical facility? Yeah. Labor we cannot. We labor. cannot. We can, but we are not. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, producing to some extent. And what are we producing? Suppose uh, let us say uh, I can say. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, suppose if I want water, uh, uh, outside I may go, uh, not only the product, uh, physical form they may not see, but uh, the in terms of labor I can uh, produce, na? Uh, in the two ways you told uh, production. Producing? How are you producing water? Uh, not producing yeah. water, but going, coming uh, like that. Uh, in the, uh, no, no. Uh, Hear me out, na? what I am saying. Mm -hmm. hey, when it comes to production, Mm -hmm. We are talking about working with nature and producing mm -hmm. something. So like growing a plant. Now, if yeah, I have good. a small yard in my house yeah. and say I put seeds of pumpkin or tomato or brinjal or some plant yeah, and I get the fruit from that. Now, that would be something that comes under production. Production. Okay. Suppose in a factory, so, we do something. Yeah, but we are not working with nature there. We are working with machine. With nature. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Labor oh, yeah. is work with nature. Mm -hmm. And when we are working with nature, what comes as an outcome can be physical facility that we get out of it. So that whole process is production. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Now, what I was coming to was, so we are not really producing that much. A lot yeah, of yeah. times, what we are doing is, even in the farms, if you see, everybody doesn't produce everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, previously, people, many people were there, madam. Let me finish, please. Yeah. So if you produce some things, now, uh, and you need more, supposing I may be producing grain, but I mm. also need oil. Now, yeah. I may purchase or go and, and uh, get the oil from somebody else who's able to do that part. Mm -hmm. Cold press, take out the oil and so on. So now, when I take the oil from him as a means of exchange, I give something to that person to take that oil from him. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not producing here, I'm exchanging. Okay, okay. You see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for yes. that exchange, I give something in return. So mm -hmm. it could be money, it could be something else. Mm -hmm. So now, what I give in terms of exchange, what is my mindset? Am I looking out for 
this whole process to be fulfilling just for me or for the other also. Okay. In okay. terms of the sense that am I trying to maximize what I get for the least amount or am I seeing for fairness so that for the other person's labor, he or she gets the fair amount also. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah, so yeah. in my exchange system with the others in society, how am I? Am I okay. taking part in this? No? So for instance, there are several people, I won't take names, but there are several people who are working very um, sincerely trying to get the laborers who are doing the work to get their fair share, even if it means making, you know, the product selling for a higher cost, because, you know, this is important, that the person who is doing the work should get paid a fair sum for doing that work, for yes. doing that labor to bring about that. So that is a big, um, you know, then you're working in that societal system to help them have a fair exchange of whatever they are producing. Yeah. So yeah. when it comes to storage also, we are talking of a large, uh, you know, not just within the family, but in the larger system, in that dimension, how we store the grains, how we store the other things, so that there is, um, you know, it's available, it doesn't get spoiled, it can be rightly utilized and so on. Okay, okay. So this is in the larger order, the dimensions that we are talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So before invention of uh, this uh, money, uh, people uh, mostly uh, they follow this exchange system, now, madam. We whatever we have, we give, and the other people whatever they. Now make, we are using money for exchange. Many, no? many, oh, money, like money for exchange. exchange. Even then. Uh, we have to see this one. Okay, okay. Yeah, of course. Whatever we are using as exchange, how we are, you know, what is our perspective? How are we looking at things? No? Mm, Am yes, I looking only for my prosperity or the prosperity of the other also? Am I looking yeah. for only my fulfillment or the fulfillment of the other also? Okay, okay. No? Yeah. So whether it is being prosperous, the exchange is whether... Uh, uh, rightful or not, that we have to see now, madam. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Surya Kanji? Uh, that's one clarification I want related to production. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to pharma, uh, IRLs uh, having the plantation. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope really a human being, whether he is producing uh, in my sense, what I feel is, it is just uh, they are growing. Only we are becoming, uh, the we are playing a role of facilitator, what I feel. Of they, course, that is true. It is the nature that is providing. That is very true. We say that I have grown this. Yeah, yeah. This my plant. But really, if you see, <laughs> because it is in my boundary, I call it my plant. If it is outside my boundary, it is not my plant. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, so yes. If I put the seed, I say this is my plant. If I didn't put the seed, then I say this is not my plant. But really speaking, things are happening on their own. I am just uh, sort of a small chain in that. I am not doing the process. That All that nature is doing on its own. Yes, that's very true. So what I felt is it is rather than referring it as a production i think it is a better word is we are uh, playing a role of facilitator yeah but i mean already with production also there is confusion so <laughs> to facilitate yeah. but yeah you're right that it's not that we are producing but we are um, we are at least helping in that process you can say yes yes, yes surely yeah. Thank you, Didi. Thank you very much. So if we go forward and we look at the outcome of this behavior, work, and participation, we talked of an undivided human society, a universal human order, 
and human tradition. So let's look at this one by one. So when we are living with justice, when we are living, justice means we are, when we interact with other human beings in our behavior, we look for not just my fulfillment, but the fulfillment of the other. So when there is this harmony, not just in myself, but I'm trying to help the other also be in harmony. This is justice. Now I start from within the family. The family is my training ground. But ultimately this is leading to a larger dimension, which is the society. So I start from within the family, but then I start expanding this view of my family. So right now, it may be that my immediate family, my spouse, my children, that is my family, or at most my parents, that is my family. Outside that boundary, I say that is not my family. But as I expand my vision, as I start seeing my relatedness with more and more people, then I start looking at even those who are in the community as my family, those who are in the village as my family. Even today, you know, in the villages, when there is, um, say for example, let me just give a brief example. Some of the people who come from the villages to the cities, now when another person from their village comes to the city, they say, my brother has come or my sister has come. Because they look at every other person in the village as their brother or sister. They see their relatedness. So like that, um, if you look, you can have that expansion of the family into larger and larger circles till we can see the world family. Till we can see that, you know, the whole world can be my family, or I can have a feeling of relatedness to the entire, you know, all the human beings in the world. Yeah, next, yeah. So in this slide, you can see, we already did this before, but now when we have this clarity, now we are going from top to bottom, you know? So when we can see this, that there is already a relationship. When I can see the submergence and I can see that every unit you know, is submerged in space is already related. Now with this clarity, I have an acceptance for this relationship. And this is in continuity because I can now see it directly, I know. It is unconditional. Now, regardless of the other's behavior or the other's um, lack of understanding, I still see my relationship. It's like how in our homes, when the child makes a mistake, we still see our relationship. We don't ignore or abandon the child. We try to guide them but we still see our relationship. And with that relatedness, we, you know, help the child understand. So that is, we don't put conditions that only if the child listens to me, I will see my relationship. If the child disobeys, then I will not see my relationship. Sometimes that also happens when I'm getting angry and disturbed and irritated and I shout at my child, that is an indicator that at that moment, I was not able to see my relationship with that child. But once we are able to directly see, and it is there for me to see, no? then there is no ambiguity. There is no doubt anymore. I can see this, so I have acceptance for the relationship with all all selves. And this is unconditional. 
so i work for not only ensuring the feelings within myself in continuity unconditionally always having the feeling of relationship within me but also i in my expression to the other no i am looking for or i am concerned with their fulfillment their harmony their happiness also so this is justice fulfilling the human human relationship from both sides so that there is mutual happiness and this i am able to see all the way up to the world family so that there is no division in the society then there is no there is no barrier it's not this community or that community this nation that nation no this area that area this sect that sect nothing like that now it is an undivided society so obviously when i see my relatedness with all and the others are also able to see the relatedness ultimately the outcome is the business in the society and this is something that i work for i see my participation in this the outcome this undivided human society that outcome may or may not be totally in my control it isn't totally in my control but my participation that part is very much in my control very much something that i have to see for myself but the final outcome when it comes that may not be in my control so i am you know with now with the realization with the seeing of things the way they are i am in happiness within with this happiness i am working for the undivided human society as an outcome so that is not i am not looking for happiness that when that happens i'll be happy no now i am already happy within i am in harmony within i am having the right feeling in continuity and with that with that harmony within i am participating and working for an undivided human society which will eventually follow then we come to the human order universal human order next slide so if you see when we are talking of universal human order this is the outcome that is there ultimately when we not only in our you know uh, behavior with human beings but in our uh, interaction with nature also we are living in harmony so we are in harmony with other human beings we are in harmony with the rest of nature and we are able to see this as one continuum so we are ensuring or we are working to ensure the human goal for all the units and this universal human order is the final outcome of that again i am not working so that i will be happy when it happens with the happiness within me i am working for this because i see it as my role in this existence therefore i participate and ultimately the outcome would be a universal human order next slide yeah so when we are looking from below or even when we are looking from above if i can see the goal within myself if i have reached this right understanding right feeling and thought within myself i am already happy with that 
I am working for the prosperity in every family, the fearlessness in society, the coexistence with nature. And those are natural expressions of my understanding. I am working towards these goals. And I am participating in these five dimensions or one of these or more than one of these five dimensions so that we can have that outcome of undivided human society and universal human order. So this we already talked of from family order to world family order. We go from expand our vision from the small family to all the way to the top. Now we have the feeling of relatedness for all, but we work for it. Next slide. If there are questions, you can raise your hand, otherwise we'll keep going. Then what about the human tradition? A tradition in which this human goal is fulfilled. Next slide. So, when we talk of undivided human society and a universal human order, and we are working for this, and you get this outcome, say. Now, this is still only, you know, um, in our lifetime when we see, suppose how to have it continue generation after generation so that it becomes a tradition. So how do you do that? So one way can be that you start from the education part. So you have, you, know, you bring about in education this understanding so more and more and more people can understand. When they understand things, then it comes in their living, the sanskar part. So they have human conduct, human consciousness leading to human conduct. And then they live with those principles you know, as a system that is human constitution. Ultimately, having that expands up to the human order. So we look at it in a little more detail um, or, you know, more easy to understand way in the next slide. But you can have, you know, any kind of sequence. This is one sequence. So you can also have human education leading to human sanskar, human conduct, and then human order. Next slide. Yeah, so here you can see how it can continue as a cycle, generation after generation, and become a human tradition. So in the red arrow where you see, that's the entry point, what we are saying. The entry point is human education. So when we provide the education, no, human conduct, now you can see if you go up from here, anti-clockwise, we mentioned at the top of the diagram, human conduct. Conduct that ensures continuity of mutual happiness and prosperity. And it is definite, it is always so. Not that today I am in a bad mood, so I don't take care of this. Tomorrow when I am in a good mood, I will be helping the other, not in that sense, but definiteness of human conduct. With that, when there are several people like that, as a society, when we live together in this relationship of mutual fulfillment with definiteness of human conduct, that has been termed human constitution. And then where the human goal is realized for all, in terms of undivided human society and universal human order, that would be called human order. And you can see how when there is human order, when there is an undivided human society and a universal human order, 
it provides a base for having this kind of education which um, stresses on live with definite human contact so then how this cycle feeds into itself and it can keep going generation after generation so that the human goal is fulfilled not just in this lifetime but for all the generations to come so this is about this whole um, lecture and i think this is are we at the end next slide yeah so um in the self reflection part <laughs> it's about coming down from the top so it may not be it may be difficult to do practically because until we really see from the top um it's kind of difficult to be able to live that but even if we look at our natural acceptance and with that we try to see we'll be able to see whatever is naturally acceptable to us it is naturally acceptable to us because that is the way the existence is that is the reflection of the existence in each one of us and that is why it is similar in all of us and that is why it is part of my self organization that whenever i am in line with that i am happy i am in harmony and whenever i am not in line with that i am disturbed i am in conflict i am unhappy so if there are any questions with any of this or you know anybody has any doubts about anything that we've talked about we can discuss this yeah. did there are some industries factories where people are working at large number with materials mm -hmm. will it not be called as labor didi and See, they are producing manufacturing units gdp yeah so see in terms of yeah we can say labor ultimately what we are saying is we are working with nature and producing something in the process no so when we are talking of production when we are talking of labor we are saying working with nature mm -hmm. now in that process we produce something with that we uh, put together some things machines so on mm -hmm. right so now we are not working with nature but we have made some man made material with that mm -hmm. we are working no mm -hmm. so i mean these are terms that more important than the term if we understand what we are saying working directly with nature ultimately everything is coming from nature only isn't it mm -hmm. whether the food you eat whether the whatever your desk your chair your laptop your, everything is coming from nature mm mm in some form or the other isn't it mm 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 but uh, then we'll you know then we'll say that when we are working with laptops also we are working with nature not really because now we have changed it into a different form mm so we are specifically talking about working with nature as labor mm and you when you work with nature you yeah. some outcome you get that is your produce what you get mm mm isn't it okay jee didi didi one more doubt didi in yeah. one of the previous slides didi there was an mm -hmm. arrow going from human tradition to wisdom indicating congruence is human goal achieved Uh, that what is that congruence and what is that arrow didi going from human tradition to wisdom the back arrow so when we are when we have this clarity of how to go about things na 
this whole resolution part starting from the right is right understanding when we have this when we identify the human goal and we see how to fulfill that human goal we you know work with nature in our interaction with other human beings in our participation in the larger order we are working for the human goal ultimately we have to see all the way up to the tradition human tradition mm mm so is there congruence between what we identified as our human goal and this end result that we are looking for means are they in line mm mm so when i am say i am looking when i identify my human goal mm am i able to see that this is what ultimately it should be in line with an undivided human society universal human order and human tradition can you see that ji 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 so uh, when i say that i have identified my goal ultimately mm. what am i seeing as the end result of that goal basically mm. Now, are these what what we have put down is that being fulfilled or not ultimately with that mm-hmm. as an outcome mm-hmm. no when mm-hmm. it happens that's not up to me but can i see that this is leading towards that is it in line with that that's what the meaning of congruence is yeah okay okay yeah ji 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 didi shall i ask on more doubt also this yeah. didi there was one query that we are not directly involved in production we are just facilitating mhm so when we convey such a message is the sometimes um, we are thinking that we we need not do anything when nature itself is producing why should human beings do <laughs> so that's the other way around that everything nature is doing then what is my role i can simply keep idle like that thoughts may be coming didi yeah but if you want to eat tomatoes you will have to put the seed in the soil no mm-hmm. that much you will have to do mm-hmm. <laughs> if i want to eat grain i have to put the seed in the soil mm-hmm. i have to help in the process a lot of the work the nature is doing itself mm-hmm. that is true i am merely a facilitator but that facilitation at least i have to do na mm-hmm. if i don't do that then mm-hmm. no i mean it's true that before we started cultivation and all whatever was there available in nature people would have that so but we have so called become civilized and we have gone beyond that and now we you know have so many desires so based on that we grow whatever we want isn't it mm mm but if we are to grow things with that wisdom of you know not exploiting nature and enriching nature in the process like yesterday mm. we were talking about nitrogen fixers and nitrogen depleters mm mm now if i am putting all plants that are going to deplete the nitrogen in the soil it is going to ruin the soil it is going mm. to make it less fertile so now i am not really enriching rather i am disturbing the harmony in the nature isn't it mm. Mm-hmm. but when i put some nitrogen fixers you know say i put some nitrogen depleters but uh, next in line i put some nitrogen fixers now mm. i take care of the problem mm mm no so now mm. there is no depletion of the nitrogen in the soil so like that with that wisdom of what is available to me in nature and how i can enrich nature in the process with all of that i work mm. yeah jee jee thank you thank you so much jee that's it from my side thanks a lot jee thank you anybody else has any observation or question we'll take it otherwise we'll move to the next chapter next lecture okay i think we can go to the next lecture this lecture is on the sum up of whatever we have been talking about
in this whole, you know, right from lecture one. So, next slide. If we see, again, you're familiar with this slide, we have been showing it again and again. But essentially, we started with what our basic desire is for continuous happiness. And we can see that this is something that I desire within myself. When we see how to get to this continuous happiness, we said it is by having the right understanding, right feeling and right thought. Now this is also within myself. So right understanding is by realizing the coexistence. That realization is an activity within the self, the highest activity in the self. So you can see how my desire for happiness, which is my need, need of the self, can be achieved through the activity of the self. Now, nothing from outside needs to come in. I am self-sufficient in that need. My need is being fulfilled from within myself. With that clarity, with that right understanding, I can identify what the human goal is, which we refer to as wisdom. And then how to go about fulfilling this human goal which we call the science. So in my behavior with other human beings, in my work with nature, in my participation in the larger order, all of this clarity is coming into that. Now I am using my body also. So up till this right understanding, wisdom and science, till here, things are happening within the self. We said right understanding when we realize the existence for the way it is in the form of coexistence. So this is within the self, in the highest activity of the self. When we identify the human goal, that is also within the self. When we look at science, how to go about fulfilling this goal. Now we have come to the B2 block, but we have aligned it with our goal. So this is also in the self. Now, when it comes to expressing this outside in our behavior, work and participation, now I am involving the body also. And then the final outcome of undivided human society, universal human order and human tradition. So this is the whole pathway. Next slide. So here, the same thing has been expressed in terms of, say, the top three, the right understanding, the wisdom, the science. Now, right understanding is where, if we look within the self, it is in the B1 block, the highest activity at the level of realization, that is in the B1 block. Wisdom, that is also B1 block. How to go about there? We are involving the B2 block. And the B2 block is coming in line with the B1 block. So all this is part, what is happening in the self, it can be called talent, is one way of referring to it. Then when we are bringing it in our behavior, in our work, in our participation in the larger order, we are involving the body also. So of course, self is involved because the self is the one that is giving the instruction to the body. But now, because we have to do this outside, the body is also involved. And this is, you know, one way of referring to this can be personality. And ultimately, if you see the outcome of this, the undivided human society, universal human order and human tradition, this is all outside. 
so now you can see where you know in this resolution part what is the role of the self what is the role of the body and what is happening outside but in all of this it is important to see that what is central in this is the self we can go to the next slide because self is the one where that understanding is going to take place self is the one that is identifying the human goal self is the one that is working out how to fulfill this goal and then when it comes to expression outside the self is using the body like an instrument so you can see that the self is central even what we said earlier that i have some need within me within myself and this need is fulfilled from within myself isn't it only when i go to express it outside then i take the help of the body and this is a natural outcome a natural expression once i am able to understand this so in my behavior with other human beings in my work with the rest of nature in my participation in the larger order now i am involving the body also but certainly it is the self that is giving the instruction the self that is deciding the self that is choosing so all in all the self is the one that is central to my existence as a human being and i am using the body like a tool and ultimately looking for this final outcome of undivided society universal human order and human tradition next slide anybody has any question you can just raise your hand and uh, stop us otherwise we will keep going so now when you say self development we said that development in the self can happen through right understanding with that right understanding you have the full solution in terms of what we called resolution and how is this happening when we are awakening to the higher activities within ourselves so when we are awakening to contemplation where we are able to see our relatedness with other units we are able to see our participation our role in this existence what we also referred to as the natural characteristic when we awaken to the activity of understanding we are able to see the harmony in nature we are able to see the self organization of all the units in nature that is the innateness of all the units and ultimately when we are able to realize we are able to see the existence in the way it is we realize that it is in the form of coexistence every unit is submerged in space and this is how all of this the foundation is there for this relatedness this self organization the activity being able to see the relatedness being able to recognize and fulfill this relationship so this you can you can think of this as an unfolding of the higher activities within us so whatever term you use this is what we are referring to when we say development in the self so you can call it unfolding of the higher activities you can call it becoming aware of the higher activities no so they are there i just have to become aware of them or they unfold in me these are terms we can use for the same thing but ultimately all this is taking place within the self so this development like we said 
this is ensured through right understanding and ultimately that whole the resolution all those points that we put down and we said that right understanding or the understanding of the existence involves three things knowledge of the human being knowledge of the existence and knowledge of the role of the human being in this existence or human conduct and then we had gone about looking at each of these in a little more detail so interestingly knowing myself knowing about myself as a human being knowing the existence and knowing my role in this existence all this is possible within the self by an unfolding of these higher activities within myself so yeah this is the same thing we said earlier that when we understand the human being we can see that this self development that we talk of it can be viewed as an unfolding of the higher activities that is the activities of contemplation understanding so let's take a look at this next slide this is the same diagram that we just talked of i think in the last lecture itself where we are seeing how this process is going about how this transformation is happening so initially we start from the animal consciousness we may be um just uh living with our focus in the selecting tasting part of the self then as our focus or our you know focus of living changes to these um what we refer to as mind also sometimes or the b2 block that we are calling these lower activities with this when we are working or when we are living then our desires our thoughts our feelings are largely influenced by the outside because now there is no guidance from within there are no higher activities to guide so whatever we are thinking whatever we are feeling it is being motivated by the outside by whatever we hear whatever we see whatever is prevalent trending in society or whatever you want to call it and what is pleasant for me at the level of sensation through the body this is basically largely the content of my imagination for the most part from there we move to the transformation to the higher activities so we'll continue with this we are